In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered in prayer this afternoon in St. Paul the Apostle Church for the ordination and inst installation of Bishop-elect Earl K. Fernandez as the 13th Bishop of Columbus. It is my privilege to acknowledge and welcome the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, the Holy Father's personal representative to the United States, Bishop Robert Brennan, Bishop of Brooklyn, who previously served this diocese from 2019 to 2021. Also present with us this afternoon is Bishop James A. Griffin, who served as the 10th Bishop of Columbus from 1983 to 2004, and Bishop Frederick Campbell, who served the arch this di diocese from 2005 to 2019. Of course, it is a great joy to welcome Bishop-elect Fernandez into our midst as he begins his ministry here. Bishop-elect, speaking on behalf of the bishops of the Metropolitan Province of Cincinnati, we look forward to working with you together in our ministry to the people of God in the state of Ohio. Welcome to Bishop-elect Fernandez, family members and many friends. In a particular way, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Governor Mike DeWine and his wife, Fran. You honor us with your presence. Additionally, I welcome United States Representative Brad Winstrup and his family and State Representative Michael Sheehy and his wife. Thank you for being with us today. We are also grateful for the presence of the Mayor of Toledo, Mr. Wade Kapsikavich and his family. Bishop-elect Fernandez was born and raised in the city of Toledo. We are grateful to be joined this afternoon by many brother bishops, priests, deacons, women and men religious, and as well as many seminarians. We are blessed by the presence of ecumenical interfaith leaders. Thank you for your presence. This our celebration is likewise enhanced by the presence of the members of the Knights of Malta, the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, Knights and Ladies of the Auxiliary of St. Peter Claver and the Knights of Columbus. We are grateful for the presence of representatives from the 11 Catholic high schools in the Diocese of Columbus, as well as representatives of all 110 parish, parishes and communities in the Archdiocese. We take this occasion to acknowledge and to express thanks to diocesan staff and lay ecclesial ministry in the Diocese of Columbus. The ministry of the bishop is greatly enhanced and insisted by your many talents and your collaboration. Finally, welcome to all of you who are joining us via live stream, EWTN, the Catholic Television Network, and St. Gabriel's Radio, Sacred Heart Radio. A special thanks to those media outlets for broadcasting this live today. We ask, together we ask God's abundant blessing upon Bishop-elect Fernandez and all those he will serve in the years that lie ahead. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who while the Blessed Virgin Mary was carrying your son in her womb, inspired her to visit Elizabeth, grant us, we pray, that faithful to the promptings of the Spirit, we may magnify your greatness with the Blessed Virgin Mary at all times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Lectura de la Carta de San Pablo a los Romanos Hermanos, que el amor entre ustedes sea sincero, aborrezcan el mal y practiquen el bien. Ámense cordialmente los unos a los otros, como buenos hermanos. Que cada uno estime a los otros más que a sí mismo. En el cumplimiento de su deber, no sean negligentes y mantengan un espíritu fervoroso al servicio del Señor. Que la esperanza los mantenga alegres. Sean constantes en la tribulación y perseverantes en la oración. Ayuden a los hermanos en sus necesidades y esmérense en la hospitalidad. Bendigan a los que los persiguen, bendíganlos, no los maldigan. Alégrense con los que se alegran, lloren con los que lloran. Que reine, reine la concordia entre ustedes. No sean pues altivos, más bien pónganse al nivel de los humildes. La palabra del Señor.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake. But bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed for I know him in whom I have believed, and am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Let us attend 
Now at that time, Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a low, loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and to his children forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then she returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Most Reverend Father, the Church of Columbus asks you to ordain this priest, Earl Fernandez, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. You have a mandate from the Holy See. We have. Let it be read. Your Excellency, Metropolitan Archbishop Schnur, Your Excellency, Bishop Brennan, Bishop Elec Fernandez, my brother Archbishops and Bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and lay faithful of the Church in Columbus, and all those joining through live streaming television and radio. I am especially pleased to join you today on this solemn and festive occasion in the Church of St. Paul the Apostle. Firstly, I want to acknowledge the work of the diocesan administrator, Monsignor Stephen Maloney, who has guided this local church with a steady hand over the last few months. Where is this priest? <laughs> present 
also no fewer than three former bishops of Columbus. The first one is Bishop Griffin. Is he around? Where is he? Ah, yeah. <laughs> then uh, I remember the second is Bishop Campbell. He has a moustache. Yeah. <laughs> And last but not least, Bishop Brennan, of course. So, Monsignor Fernandez, you will have no shortage of counselors. <laughs> Bishop Elec Fernandez, I can't think of it as other than significant that you are being ordained in this church dedicated to an apostle. The office of bishop is, of course, radically defined by its apostolic origins. The church is apostolic because she teaches what the apostles taught and because the bishops inherit the office of the apostles and perpetuate their ministry. There is something appropriate, too, about the fact that we gather for this rite during the Easter season. You may recall that immediately after our Lord's resurrection, when the Holy Church had to choose a new apostle, when the Church, in other words, was selecting a bishop for the first time, Peter offered an extraordinarily concise summary of the qualities needed. I quote, therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time of the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So, the identikit for the successor of the apostles is that he is to be a witness of the resurrection. This constitutes almost a definition of what it means to be a bishop. Monsignor Earl, you are to be a witness of the Lord's resurrection not only by your words, but by your life. Your life and teaching must be animated by the hope and joy that come from faith in the Lord's resurrection. For that reason, Pope Francis has remarked that long faces cannot proclaim Jesus. This is not your case. <laughs> You are called to be a witness to our Lord's resurrection in the local church of Columbus and to invite others to share his new life. All of you. So now, it helps that Monsignor Earl has a ready and radiant smile. <laughs> but witnessing to the resurrection requires more than a smile, even if it's not at all a bad start. It means that, first and foremost, we must speak of our Lord, of his life, his teachings, his passion, death, and resurrection. I am reminded of the beautiful homily of Paul, Paul, Paul VI at Manila when he declared, I must bear witness to his name. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, I could never finish speaking about him. He is the light and the truth. Indeed, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, you have heard him spoken of. Indeed, the greater part of you are already his. You are Christians. So, to you Christians, I repeat his name. To everyone, I proclaim him. Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. 
He is the king of the new, new world. He is the secret of history. He is the key of our destiny. End of quote. With these few thoughts, Monsignor Fernandez, I commend you to the new responsibility to which <clears throat> the Church calls you. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph, and Saint Francis de Sales intercede for you and strengthen you as you begin your Episcopal ministry. And now, with great joy, I will read for you the Apostolic Letter of Appointment. This is a translation in English of the letter sent to us in Latin by the Holy Father himself, and it will be shown to you by the new bishop. Francis, bishop, servant of the servants of God, to our beloved son, Earl Kenneth Fernandez, from the clergy of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, and until now pastor there of St. Ignatius of Loyola Parish in the city of Cincinnati appointed Bishop of Columbus, greetings and apostolic blessing. It is our earnest desire that all men and women come to know ever more the incredible love of God, which through the Holy Spirit has been brought to light in the Paschal mystery of Christ. Urge on by this fundamental principle, as well as by the office of our pastoral mission, and impelled toward both the spiritual welfare of the souls of the faithful and the growth of the, of the church, we turn our attention with fatherly affection to the needs of the community of Columbus, which is currently vacant owing to the transfer of its former ordinary, our venerable brother, Robert John Brennan, to the Diocese of Brooklyn, and consequently, awaits a new shepherd and moderator of diocesan life. We consider you, beloved son, to be suitable for undertaking this position, given your expertise in moral theology and your manifest strong faith, good character, zeal for souls and other virtues. Therefore, by the fullness of our apostolic authority, we appoint you Bishop of Columbus, granting to you the due rights as well as imposing the relative obligations in accordance with the norms of canon law. Concerning your Episcopal ordination, we gladly permit you to receive it anywhere outside the city of Rome, the liturgical norms being observed. After you have made the profession of faith and taken the oath of fidelity, toward us and our successors are stipulated by the canons of ecclesiastical law. In addition, you will inform the clergy and the people of your diocese about this, our letter. That's what we are doing now. <laughs> so that they may acknowledge their new shepherd, welcoming him appropriately and rendering to him the reverence that is owed. Finally, beloved son, as you undertake this important position, it is our fervent wish that, under the prayerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and that of Saint Joseph, her spouse, you be strengthened by these words of the Apostle Paul. Show yourself as a model of good deeds in every respect, with integrity in your teaching, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be criticized, so that the opponent will be put to shame without anything bad to say about you. It's quite strong, isn't it? <laughs> Given at Rome, at St. John Lateran, on the second day of the month of April, in the year of the Lord 2022, the 10th of our pontificate, and it is signed Pope Francis.
Your Excellencies, Archbishop Schnur, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Cincinnati, Archbishop Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio, Bishop Brennan, the former Bishop of Columbus and currently the Bishop of Brooklyn, New York. My brother bishops, priests, consecrated religious and lay faithful. I greet you with the words of St. Francis of Assisi, Pax et Bonum, peace and good. It is a great joy for me to be here today to preach at the Episcopal ordination of our dear brother, Earl Fernandez, as the 13th Bishop of Columbus. A special word of welcome to Father Earl's family, who have loved him and made him the prayerful and humble priest that he is today. I want to prayerfully mention Father Earl's father, who has gone to the Lord, and his dear mother, who is too frail to be here in person. Thankfully, she is able to watch her son's Episcopal ordination on EWTN. These two wonderful people have had the strongest influence on Father Earl's life, especially his spiritual life. They were his mentors during his formative years. And like all parents, they were Father Earl's and his brother's first teachers in the way of faith. They taught him well because they lived what they believed. Earl, I am very honored to preach at your Episcopal ordination, and I thank you for your kind invitation to do so at this beautiful liturgy. I am especially grateful for your friendship and for your advice and encouragement. Everything that we do this day is under the mantle of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we celebrate the feast of her visitation to her cousin Elizabeth. Like Mary, we can truly say this day, the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. We share that same joy with which John the Baptist leaped in his mother's womb. We echo the words of the prophet Zephaniah, shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. Today, the Diocese of Columbus shouts and sings for joy as they receive their new shepherd. And the whole church rejoices as history is being made today when you, Father Earl Fernandez, will become the first Indo-American Catholic ordinary in the history of the United States of America. gospel account, which we just heard of the visitation to Elizabeth by the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
might well be described as one of the most well-loved stories in the Bible. If for nothing else, we were reminded of this event practically every time we sing or recite the Magnificat, the same hymn Mary sang when she visited her cousin Elizabeth. In addition, we are offered the opportunity to reflect on this encounter every time we pray the joyful mysteries of the Holy Rosary. The Gospel reading depicts Mary setting out from Nazareth in Galilee to the hill country of Judah to visit her cousin Elizabeth. She set out in response to a message of the angel Gabriel that Elizabeth was six months pregnant. Even though she herself was with child, Mary set out on a journey of love to give support to her older cousin. Mary brought herself to Elizabeth, but she also brought Jesus, the Lord, whom she was carrying in her womb. Mary graced Elizabeth by her journey. As a result of Mary's visit, we are told that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mary not only gave to Elizabeth, but she also received from her. She herself was blessed by Elizabeth, who said, blessed are you among women. Blessed is she who believed. Both Mary and Elizabeth show themselves to be very aware of the Lord. Elizabeth recognizes Mary as the mother of God, and Mary proclaims the greatness of the Lord in her response to Elizabeth's blessing of her. On his apostolic visit to Romania in 2019, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, preached on this sacred text. He invited us to meditate on three elements. Mary journeys, Mary encounters, and Mary rejoices. Mary journeys. She makes a difficult and dangerous journey from, from Nazareth to the house of Zechariah and Elizabeth. It was a journey that required courage and patience. The experience of a journey is one of those that resonates within the heart of our bishop-elect Earl. You are the son of Indian immigrants who journeyed to this land of opportunity and settled in Toledo, Ohio. Your own life's journey brought you to medical school where you soon realized that God was calling you to be a priest of Jesus Christ, the divine physician. You continued that journey to Rome to study moral theology, to Washington, and to the Apostolic Nunciature, to Mount St. Mary's in Cincinnati, to teach, and to many assignments in the Archdiocese of Cincinnati where you worked with great zeal and love for people. In writing about your appointment, as Bishop of Columbus, Archbishop Schnur stated, through all his assignments, Father Fernandez has been an ever joyful witness to the goodness and beauty and truth of the Catholic faith. 
And now this journey brings you to Columbus. Mary encounters. Mary encounters Elizabeth. In the words of Pope Francis, remarkably, the younger woman goes to meet the older one, seeking her roots, while the older woman is reborn and prophetically foretells the future of the younger one. Here, young and old meet, embrace, and awaken the best of each. It is a miracle brought about by the culture of encounter where no one is discarded or pigeonholed, but all are sought out because all are needed to reveal the Lord's face. They are not afraid to walk together. And when this happens, God appears and works wonders in his people. The Holy Spirit impels us to go out from ourselves, from all that hems us in, from the things to which we cling. Earl, you are a man who loves people. And how many lives have you already impacted by your ministry? In a recent interview, you said, I see myself as a man, a human man, made in the image of God, and I see every person as a brother and sister. These words come from your own experiences of discrimination and prejudice firsthand. You did not give in to anger or despair. Rather, you let these experiences of adversity shape your empathy and compassion. You took to heart the wise counsel of St. Teresa of Calcutta. True love is love that causes us pain, that hurts, and yet brings us joy. That is why we must pray to God and ask him to give us the courage to love. Mary rejoices. She is filled with joy because she entrusts herself to the Lord in all things. Mary reminds us that God can always work wonders if we open our hearts to him and to our brothers and sisters. In your first press conference in the Diocese of Columbus, Earl, you said that you look forward to announcing the joyful good news and building the kingdom of God. The opening words of Pope Francis's apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, joy of the gospel, he wrote, the joy of the gospel fills the hearts and the lives of all who encounter Jesus. Those who accept his offer of salvation and set free from sin, sorrow, inner emptiness, and loneliness. With Christ, joy is constantly born anew. In this exhortation, Pope Francis says, I wish to encourage the Christian faithful to embark upon a new chapter of evangelization marked by this joy of pointing out new paths for the church's journey in the years to come. These are words that I know will guide your Episcopal ministry. Pope Francis has a wonderful description of the work of a bishop. He said, a bishop will sometimes go before his people, pointing the way, 
and keeping their hopes vibrant. At other times, he will simply be in their midst with his unassuming and merciful presence. And yet, other times, he will have to walk after them, helping those who lag behind, and above all, allowing the flock to strike out on new paths. This is the road that lies ahead of you, my dear brother Earl. In the second reading, we heard the words of Paul to Timothy, rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. Do not be ashamed then of testifying to our Lord, but take your share of suffering for the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling. Take to heart these words as you shepherd the Lord's flock in the Diocese of Columbus. The joy we feel is a sure sign of the presence of God's Holy Spirit, who, as St. Paul reminds us, is the comforter whose presence among us and in us brings such gifts as love and joy and peace, kindness, and faithfulness. Earl, you have chosen as your Episcopal motto, Veni per Marium, words from a prayer of the servant of God, Monsignor Luigi Guziani, the founder of communion and liberation. Come Holy Spirit, come through Mary. Like Mary, may we open our hearts to receive these precious gifts, fruits of the grace of this special and sacred moment. It is, of course, through the powerful presence of God's Spirit acting through this sacrament of holy orders that our new bishop will not be just commissioned but enabled by God's grace to be all that the Lord and his church requires of him as a bishop, a successor of the apostles in this diocese and in the church universal. It is important for us to remind ourselves that through this liturgy, so rich of symbolism, we are all being drawn into a mysterious and powerful and certain work of God. Through the grace of this sacrament, of God's provident love, you will be remolded and reshaped into a living image of the presence of the one true Good Shepherd among his people. In this sense, the words of John the Baptist in reference to Jesus must hold good for you as well. He must increase. I must decrease. Earl, remain close to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is first in the praise of God, and she is for us the best teacher of prayer as our mother is always close to us, just as she was close to her son, standing with him in his agony at the foot of the cross. She is also, in her own words, the handmaid of the Lord, for she always brings us to her son, and that she may heal and redeem us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We do rejoice. We rejoice in the work of the Holy Spirit, 
who alone can invoke in us the holiness we are called to radiate, the light of the knowledge of God's glory, the glory on the face of Christ himself, visible in our eyes today and always. My dear brother Earl, may God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. And may the Lord grant you his peace. Amen. The ancient rule of the, Holy of, the, of, the, of the Holy Fathers decrees that the one to be ordained bishop should be questioned in the presence of the people concerning his resolve to guard the faith and, just, and to discharge this office. And so therefore, dear brother, do you resolve to carry out until death with the grace of the Holy Spirit the, off, the off, office entrusted to us by the apostles and we passed on to you through the laying on of our hands? I do. Do you resolve to proclaim the gospel of Christ faithfully and unfailingly? I do. Do you resolve to guard the deposit of faith, pure and entire according to the tra tradition preserved always and everywhere in the church from the time of the apostles? I do. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in her unity with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? I do. Resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed apostle Peter? I do. Do you resolve to be a devoted father, to encourage your holy, the holy people of God, and to guide them in the way of salvation, together with the priests and deacons, your fellow ministers? I do. Do you resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to reach out in kindness and mercy to the poor, to strangers, and to all those in need? I do. Do you resolve as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and, and to gather them into the Lord's fold? I do. Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for his holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach? I do with the help of God. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Let us pray, dearly beloved, that the loving kindness of Almighty God, providing for the welfare of his church, will grant to this chosen one an abundance of his grace.
Gracious, graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and as you raise the horn of priestly grace over this, your servant, pour out upon him the power of your blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen.
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be. It is you who establish order in your church through your gracious word, who from the beginning predestined a righteous people born of Abraham, who instructed rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministry who from the beginning of the world have been pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Now pour forth upon this chosen one the power that is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved son, Jesus Christ, and whom he gave to the holy apostles, who established the church in each place as your, as your sanctuary to the glory and unfailing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, nor of all hearts, that this your servant whom you have chosen for the episcopate may nourish your holy flock and may without reproach exercise before you the holy priesthood, serving you night and day, that he may unceasingly cause your face to shine upon us and offer the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the strength of the spirit of the, of the high priesthood, he may have the authority to forgive sins according to your command, that he may apportion offices according to your precept, and loosen every bond according to the authority you gave the apostles. And may he, may he be pleasing to you in meekness and purity of heart, offering a sweet fragrance to you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom you grant, through whom glory and power and honor are yours, with the Holy Spirit, in the, in the Holy Church, both now and forever and ever. Amen. 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 May God, may God, who has made you a share in the high priesthood of Christ, himself pour up, um, uh, out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing.
receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adorned with undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre and let the splendor of holiness shine in you so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may merit to receive an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God.
to accept the charity of the most blessed mother of your only begotten son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extend your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clonbus, Sixus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all the saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. I acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation, to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, th who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Mycelanus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, power, and glory, and glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not willing that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your church proclaim your greatness, O God, for you have done great things for your faithful. And as St. John the Baptist left with joy when he first sensed the hidden presence of Christ, so may your church rejoice to receive in this sacrament the same ever-living Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever.
You may be seated. My dear friends in Christ, I want to begin by thanking Almighty God for this day and for the abundance of grace that he has poured out upon me and upon the Diocese of Columbus. I hope and pray that I may be a shepherd after the heart of Christ, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, my patroness, and that I may be a gentle servant of the gospel, like St. Francis de Sales, the patron of our diocese. I thank the Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the opportunity to serve as a shepherd of this diocese. And once more, I pledge my fidelity to him and his successors. I want to thank Archbishop Schnur, Archbishop Pierre, and Bishop Brennan for consecrating me, as well as my brother bishops who made the trip here from all parts of the country. I thank Archbishop Schnur for his fatherly care and leadership as my bishop in Cincinnati. And I look forward to learning from him and working collegially with him. He was instrumental in bringing about a rebirth and flourishing of vocations in Cincinnati and I hope to reproduce his success here in Columbus. I thank Archbishop Pierre for his service to this country as Apostolic Nuncio. Through we experience the closeness of the Holy Father and the presence of Peter, the successor, the vicar of Christ on earth, is here with us. I am also grateful that he fixed my miter. <laughs> I'm grateful for his paternal affection shown to me over the course of many years, especially during my service at the Apostolic Nunciature. I also want to acknowledge the presence of members of the staff of the Apostolic Nunciature who are present here. They work tirelessly behind the scenes, away from their diocese, so that other dioceses, dioceses like ours, may have bishops. I think we should all give them a round of applause. I want to thank Bishop Brennan. Welcome back to Ohio. I have big shoes to fill. He was here only briefly but he lifted the morale of both the people and the clergy. And we are happy to have him back, if only for a few days. He, of course, was building on the legacy of Bishops Campbell and Griffin, who I want to acknowledge. I also want to thank Archbishop Hartmayer for his fine homily, as well as Bishop Thomas of Toledo, who preached at the Vespers last night. To my brother bishops, I'm looking forward to working with you and learning from you. Let's acknowledge our bishops here present. I also want to acknowledge the presence of the Bishop of Lansing, Earl Boyer, who for many years referred to me as the other Earl. As it turns out, we are the only two bishops in the world named Earl. <laughs> he is from the diocese, which includes Ann Arbor and the team from up north. He is from the state of a name which shall not be spoken in a holy place. <laughs> told me I was already talking trash, so I plead guilty, and I will say, <laughs> last November, there was no Catholic Bishop of Columbus at the time of the game. <laughs> this year, I think he and I will have a friendly wager, which, to talk a little more trash, he will lose. <laughs> I also want to acknowledge the presence of the clergy. The deacons of the Diocese of Columbus, along with the four deacons here present from my parish, uh, St. Ignatius of Loyola, they have a special relationship to the bishop. I include among those my brother Trevor, as well as Deacon Berg, 
the chancellor of the diocese, uh, Deacon, Deacon Joe, who was also one of the deacons here, and Deacon Peter Claver, who was just ordained uh, on Friday. Deacons are amongst the chief architects in the ministry of the bishop, and we are grateful for their humble service. To the priests of the Diocese of Columbus, I am so happy to be your shepherd and your brother, and I look forward to listening to, listening to you and to working with you in the Lord's vineyard. I want to work for you, though. I want to work for you so that you may exercise your ministry with joy so as to attract more workers in the Lord's vineyard. I want you, and I promise you, I will be close to you. To my brothers from Cincinnati, to my former students who traveled from as far away as Tulsa, and to those priests whom I met in Rome and who traveled to come here to Ohio, I want to thank you for your friendship, support, and priestly witness. Thank you for bringing the joy of the gospel and the sacraments to the holy people of God. I want to acknowledge the presence of so many religious and consecrated persons here. You are a living sign that God is to be loved above all else. I've been so privileged to just be in your presence and to see your commitment to the poor, to your students, to the sick, and to the clergy. I especially want to acknowledge two sisters of the Visitation who received permission to be exclaustrated on their patronal feast day to be here today. They live in a cloister behind walls and they pray and fast and do penance for all of us. Let us give thanks to God for all our men and women religious. Today is a great celebration for the whole people of God, especially here in Columbus. Someone once asked Cardinal Newman what he thought about the laity, and he responded, I think we should look rather foolish without them. <laughs> I want to publicly acknowledge the staff of St. Ignatius of Loyola Parish in Cincinnati, with whom I have been privileged to work these past three years, as well as the countless lay men and women who have prayed for me and sacrificed for me, and for so many priests. Your friendship has meant the world to me. Personally, I don't like to live in an overly clericalized world, and your presence in the world is a leaven there, and it brings me both great hope and joy. I also wish to acknowledge the government officials here present, especially Governor and Mrs. DeWine, Representative Wenstrup and his wife Monica, Mayor Wade Kapsikavich, who is my high school classmate, uh, the former mayor of Sydney, Ohio, uh, Mike Barhorst and his wife, Jenny, who have been close friends for many years, uh, and, uh, Representative Sheehy and his wife, as well as Danny O'Connor, who is a former student of mine who is representing the mayor of Columbus. I look forward to working with you, along with all the representatives from other religious traditions and other Christian denominations, in helping to promote the dignity of the human person and the common good here in Columbus and throughout our great state. To all those who have made these liturgies and these days possible, especially the installation committee, the musicians, the members of the police force and Homeland Security, as well as all those engaged in hospitality, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We men are hopeless at organizing anything, and I'm grateful for all of you. <laughs> I especially want to thank Monsignor Maloney, who probably is the happiest person in the whole diocese of Columbus. staff and people in Upper Arlington at St. Andrews who made yesterday's Vesper celebration so special. And I want to thank Father Jonathan Wilson and all the people of St. Paul Church uh, here in Westerville. Finally, I want to thank Julie Greer, who has now been executive assistant to four bishops here in Columbus, because she handled all the invitations and RSVPs, and even at 6.30 in the morning was getting emails from me, oh, and there's another name, and this person didn't get their invitation. <laughs> and she handled it all with grace. Julie, thank you.
Today, I only want to say thank you. I told Wes Baker, who carved my stemma for the, uh, for the cathedra, I told him, well, I hope to be the bishop here for the next 25 years, and therefore today I only want to say thank you because you will have to listen to me for 25 years. <laughs> Columbus is a growing city and a growing diocese, and with the vision that comes from the gospel and a lot of grace, I am convinced that together we can increase the kingdom of God and build up the church. Mis queridos hermanos e hermanas, los saludo en el nombre de, de nuestro Señor Jesús. Estoy muy feliz de ser su obispo y deseo estar cerca de ustedes. Como hijo de inmigrantes, soy consciente de los muchos desafíos que enfrentan, pero también conozco de su gran fe y devoción, especialmente a la Santísima Virgen y a su Hijo amado Jesús. Ustedes tienen muchos dones y espero que los pongan al servicio de la Iglesia en la diócesis de Columbus. Aunque no puedo hablar español muy bien, tal vez mi sonrisa sea la manera de decirles que su obispo los ama. Y aún más importante, que Dios los ama. Enfrentamos este camino juntos como miembros de una familia de Dios de una iglesia de Cristo. A los italianos que están presentes, quiero agradecerles por todo lo que habéis hecho por mí, especialmente durante los años de la formación sacerdotal y sacerdocio. Quiero reconocer la presencia de mis amigos del movimiento Comunión y Liberación, de la mia parroquia, Sacramentísimo Cuore de Jesús, de la Sergiata Fuscoldese, e figli di Italia e United Italian Society. Grazie per la vostra amicizia, fraternità e soprattutto per le vostre preghiere. Grazie di cuore. Nella gioia del Signore risorto, per gli nel suo aiuto permanente. Andiamo avanti, il Signore ci aiuterà e Maria, sua Santissima Madre, starà dalla nostra parte. Grazie a voi, grazie a tutti. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the presence of my family. My family in India could not join due to visa issues, but they are joining via live streaming, and so I greet them, as well as the many Indians and Indian Americans who have supported me with their prayers. It is truly a cause of joy and great pride in the best sense of that for a whole nation. I wish to acknowledge the presence of my cousins who have made the trek from Canada. Although they are few in number, their prayers are powerful. My nephews and nieces, too, have been a great support for me throughout the years, filling me with joy and hope for our future and our church. Then, of course, there are my brothers and their wives. Their wives are going straight to heaven. <laughs> My brothers have been a great source of strength and support through my nearly five decades of life, and they are the fruit of my parents' love. At the press conference at the time of my appointment, I said that without my parents, I would be absolutely nothing. And it is true. They gave me life and faith and made countless hidden sacrifices so that we boys could make the most of the freedom this country offers and the freedom offered by Jesus Christ. My father would be ecstatic from his place in heaven. And my mother, whom we nearly lost this past week and who is very near to passing into eternity, but together they raised a child to be a priest, to be a successor of the apostles. How much I wish I could tell them how much I love them. My, mo my mother still has moments of lucidity, a few moments, and the other day, my youngest brother Eustace had gone to visit her, and he said to her, Mom, uh, you know that Earl is becoming a bishop on Tuesday. And she said, I know, but why would he want to do that? There's no money in that. <laughs> when I told her that the Pope nominated me to be bishop nearly two months ago, she said, that is good news. This will be a blessing. 
It will be a blessing for our family. It will be a blessing for everyone. Let us hope and pray that she was being prophetic. Faith and family. We are the church, the family of God in the Diocese of Columbus. The Pope wants a synodal church, a church that walks together. I invite you, the people of God, to get on the road with me, to journey with me on the road that leads to paradise. We can no longer be content with remaining in our churches and our offices. We must be a missionary church that goes forth to share the joy of the gospel. Columbus has tremendous potential for growth and a tremendous need for the gospel of Jesus Christ who brings salvation. Following Pentecost, the church grew rapidly. Here in Columbus, we need a new Pentecost to set the world on fire. We need missionaries and priests willing to make a gift of themselves in the service of the gospel. Why, well, I'm honored to be the shepherd of this diocese, and I promise to work hard for you, to spill my blood for you. I bring to your attention that this year in the Diocese of Columbus, there will be more bishops than priests ordained. I ask every man, woman, and child to pray for vocations to the priesthood, especially for our diocese. His Excellency Archbishop Pierre could tell us all about St. Jean Jugon, the foundress of the Little Sisters of the Poor. But one time she said, Le plus parfait acte de mort, c'est le sacrifice. The most perfect act of love is sacrifice. Sacrifice is usually difficult and irksome. Only love can make it easy, and perfect love can make it a joy. We are willing to sacrifice in proportion to our love, and when our love is perfect, the sacrifice is complete. There is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. I'm asking you, the people of God, to make little sacrifices with great love for priestly vocations. And to the young men here present, I am asking you to make a sacrifice, to make a gift of yourself out of love for the people of our diocese. To answer this call requires courage. Mary was a young person who courageously said yes to God, that it be done to me according to your word. And so we invoke the Holy Spirit, asking him to come to us and to give us that same courage that allowed Mary to say, yes, yes, Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. We turn once more to ask the Holy Spirit to descend upon us and to come to us through Mary, the mother of the Lord. Veni, Sancte Spiritus, veni, Per Maria. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, endow with the spirit of wisdom those to whom you have handed on authority to govern, that from the flourishing of a holy flock may come eternal joy for its shepherds. Amen. As in your majestic power you allot the number of our days and the measure of our years, Look favorably upon our humble service and confer on our time the abundance of your peace. Amen. Amen. Give a happy outcome to the tasks that through your grace you have laid upon me, whom you have raised to the rank of bishop, making me pleasing to you in the fulfillment of my duties, and so guide the hearts of people and pastor that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherd, nor the shep care of the shepherd, be lacking for the flock. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go.